Okay, so some practical tips, just different styles of fasting. And then a deconditioning diet that I worked on and explained on my blog. And then one final point, a little bit about fasting workouts, which I think is an interesting twist on intermittent fasting. What I want to say here too is just some caveats. I'm sharing my own experience. Um, this isn't for everybody. If you're you know, pregnant, if you're nursing, if you're a child, I don't think this would be advisable. And you, if you have any health problems, you should you know, talk to your doctor. So I'm not giving medical advice here, I'm just sharing my own experience. Um, there's really a few different kinds of ways to do intermittent fasting. One is you know, a whole 24 hour fast. This is sometimes called alternate day fasting where you eat what you want one day, you fast the next. Eat what you want the next day, you fast the next. And that works for some people. Um, <coughs> I don't find personally that that's the most effective way to do it. There's two, there's a couple different ways to do that. There's one diet on the internet called Eat Stop Eat by Brad Kalan. Um, he's got a lot of good information there too, and also on the physiology of how it works. There's another style which I've called partial day fasting. This is where you eat every day, but eat within a window. Uh, there's one called Fast Five, which I'll talk about on the next slide, and there's one called the Warrior Diet. The warrior diet is based on this idea that uh, uh, paleolithic ancestors or you know, were warriors and they would be active all day and they would eat a big meal at night. And that's the warrior diet. There's random fasting where you fast for two hours one day and 12 the next and then you eat normal for three days and then you eat a 24 hour fast and then you, you mix it all up. And this is Art, Art Devaney, who's really one of the uh, early paleo guys. And he said, this is actually a good idea because you're keeping your body surprised. It's actually how uh, hunter-gatherers uh, faced the world. You know, they didn't have uh, predictable meals. They had to go out and gather and hunt. And he believes that's, and I actually think there's some value there in that uh, you, this idea of keeping your body a little bit surprised and on track, avoid some uh, uh, getting hunger on a, on a regular schedule. And then there's the idea of extended fasts, which I think strays a little bit outside of, of intermittent fasting. So the one I would, I guess, would recommend as a starting point for most people would be the Fast Five Diet. There's a really good website. Just go to you know, fastfive.com on the internet. And there's an ebook that's free you can download. It's very simple. It's got good information. The basic idea is you eat in a five-hour window, and you fast the other 19. So what could that mean? You could start eating lunch take a little break, eat like an early dinner or whatever, and that's it. Or you might shift it a little bit later, two to six. I got that wrong, two to seven. <laughs> uh, or maybe you go five to 10. Maybe you do something more like the warrior diet. And you can mix it up. You can shift this window around. So maybe you get breakfast and lunch the, another day and skip the dinner. But the point is to allow these 19 hour periods where you're not eating. It's very flexible. You don't have to do it every day. You could do it two days a week, you could do it four days a week, you could do it every day. I think the more you do it, the more you tend to gravitate towards doing it every day. What can you have during that window of time when you're fasting? Non-caloric beverages, you know, water, herb teas, coffee, uh, as long as you put the, don't put sugar in it, you know, maybe uh, <laughs> non-caloric beverages. Um, that's about it. Uh, I've developed a a twist on intermittent fasting, which I call the deconditioning diet, and it's based on this Pavlovian idea. Um, and you see it, you know, look at Pavlov and how his dogs would salivate and get hungry when they have a stimulus, like a bell, uh, presented to them. Well, we're the same way. We uh, respond to aromas, the taste of food, the texture, coming into a nice uh, cafe like this, being with friends. You know, there are all kinds of signals that turn on preparatory hormones and enzymes like insulin and like ghrelin, like clockwork. And those hormones turn on the hunger, they drop the glucose levels, they make us hungry, so we can decondition those. And the key tool that I talk about on my blog is extinction. It's allowing that response to die, confusing it, using a, a technique called Q exposure. Key point, which again, I'm going against the conventional wisdom, everybody says, always eat when you're hungry. And my advice is never eat when you're hungry. And what do I mean by that? 
I'll, I'll explain shortly. So hunger signaling and hormone conditioning. We have these enzymes and horm or hormones like insulin and ghrelin. Insulin really turns on in response to sensory cues like aroma, taste. There's this cephalic phase of insulin that's um, mediated by your, your nose, your mouth, your eyes. And then there's ghrelin, which is something that turns on like clockwork. And if you feed people or mice on a regular schedule, their ghrelin comes up at a different at a set time every day. And here's a one study where uh, one group of people was fed at four o'clock their meal. When people one group was fed at ten o'clock their meal, and their ghrelin would come up two hours before that meal. After a couple of days of this, you get trained into that. This is why I think uh, Art Devaney is right to some extent that you should too rigid a schedule because you're going to be really tapping into those cues. So how do you apply this deconditioning diet? The key is to really to free yourself from this dependence on these cues. So you deliberately expose yourself to flavors and aromas in a social atmosphere. Maybe you cook dinner for your family, but you don't eat. And this is, sounds terrible. This sounds like torture. <laughs> it's very painful, and that is true actually for like a day or two. And then it just starts dying away. It's really impressive. It does work. Stick with it if you're going to try this. Um, the key, though, is regardless of whether you do that cue conditioning, don't eat when you're really hungry. And what I mean by that is eat before or after that. And if you think about it, your hunger is like a wave. It comes in waves. And you can almost plot it out. You're, you're getting hungry and hungry, and then it reaches a peak, and then it starts to come down. When it's coming down, then eat. What you'll do there is you won't reinforce in a Pavlovian way. You won't reinforce that strong appetite. If you always eat when you're hungry, then you're reinforcing that hunger. You're reinforcing those hunger signals. And this may sound simplistic. It works with dogs. It works with rice, with, with mice, and it works with people. So there's three stages in the, in the diet that I advise. One is just generally reduce your insulin levels. You know, you have low glycemic. You have low carb, get rid of the snacks, allow more time between meals. Use this cue exposure method. Expose yourself to food, you know, and just don't eat it, or wait till you're not hungry. Wait for those cravings to start to die down. And when you've done those two things, then you can experiment with cutting out snacks, cutting out meals, and do it gradually. The biggest mistake I think people make in trying IF is they say, ah, I'm gonna do a 12 hour fast. I'm going to just skip breakfast and lunch tomorrow and just eat dinner. And they might get one through one day and then they're just famished and they way overeat and they said, this isn't for me. My advice, if you really like to eat, just start by giving up a morning snack. Two or three days a week, not every day. Then get rid of all those snacks. Then give up the afternoon snacks and eat solid three meals a day. Just give up the snacks. Then when you, you'll find actually that that's comfortable. And only at that point should you consider skipping breakfast or giving up more than that. Do it gradually. Your body is an adaptive system and it will adapt. Try to do it too fast, it will backfire, guaranteed. Final uh, twist on this, fasted workouts. Um, Johnny, I know you've tried this. I do it. A lot of bodybuilders advised against this. They said you got to have the glucose, you know, got to have that in your system before you're working out. Actually, what you find out is that if you have uh, a lot of sugar and carbs before you work out, your insulin level is high. You're not going to be able to work off the fat. It's going to you'll feel great. You get a good workout. You won't lose any any weight. You won't lose any fat. No body re recomposition will occur, and you won't get all of those benefits. And, because one nice thing that a workout does is it really drives the insulin levels low. It really improves your insulin sensitivity, and you're preventing yourself from getting that benefit. Um, there's some discussion about how soon you should eat to refuel after a workout. There's differences of opinion. This guy, Martin Birkin, who I highly recommend, he's probably one of the most intelligent, practical, and well-researched guys writing about intermittent fasting. He has a blog called Lean Gains, and he advises a refeed cycle. So I hope I've laid out you know the science and a couple tips here about three different sites here that I would recommend looking at uh, if you're interested. One is my own blog, a little bit of a pitch for that, mm -hmm. um, called gettingstronger.org. I've 
about this philosophy I call hormetism. This is really the application of hormesis through pro progressively ramping up the exposures, allowing enough rest, and, and understanding how to use the dynamics of hormesis to actually apply that to your own situation, whether it be diet, whether that be eyesight, whether that be uh, some psychological strengthening. The second one I'd recommend is Fast 5 as a great jumping in point for intermittent fasting. It's the most practical plan. There is a forum where <coughs> people share their experiences, you know, issues, uh, suggestions. Uh, and I think it also it's a, just a very approachable, flexible kind of plan. And then the final one is this lean gains. If you're interested in combining Maya with workout, if your real goal is you know, bodybuilding, body recomposition, and you want to get also, also the health benefits, uh, Martin Birkin is, is really outstanding. So that's the overview, and I'd be happy to take any questions.